everybody, I'm Steph with Board Game Geek, and I get to talk about the Red Cathedral with Matt from DeVere today. How are you doing, Matt? I am doing great, thank you. I'm really pleased to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah. So tell us, do you know how this this, this design came into being? Like, how, how did, where was, did, where did this first start, do you know? I actually, I do. Um, Shay and Isra, the designers, had been working on this for a while. They started back in 2015. And uh, Isra was obsessed with this idea of combining uh, a rondelle and dice. And it was originally supposed to be um, a two-player game that was uh, between two Italian architects. I can't remember the names of them now. It's um, Bor Bor Borini and Bor versus Borakini or something like this. And then they realized maybe it's going to be a much better uh, four-player game. And they were working with another publisher at the time. And that publisher, to their credit, suggested, you know, maybe the Red Cathedral would be a much better theme. And so they worked on it for a few more years. They showed it at prototype fairs here in Spain. And, um, and when they showed it to our publishing team, uh, the guy jumped on it right away and uh, brought, the, brought the prototype back to our office. And he said he knew right away that we had to publish it. So, uh, so that's kind of the story, and we're, wow, you know, that, that is game. awesome! Yeah, and and so and it's games. evolved from just a two-player game, though. Now you could play up to four-player, and I think it's a solo mode in there too, right? There is a solo mode, yeah, which is very nice these days because of the uh, confinement and all the, the environment. COVID. <laughs> yeah, so I encourage you to try that Excellent. out as well. I usually, when I play by myself, I play. Uh, Three player me versus me versus me so and then that's, that's wow fun, that yeah. must be a challenge <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 but it's, it's good i like it yeah so so tell us a little bit about uh the overall feeling and, and mechanics of the game then we could dive into a little bit more details about it okay so in the red cathedral uh we are architects who have been charged by uh czar ivan the terrible to build out uh, sections of this iconic cathedral. And what we're basically doing, it's a, it's a fairly classic kind of Euro game with some uh, innovative twists on familiar mechanics. And we're moving resources to different sections of the, of the cathedral uh, in order to build them out and gain recognition and, and prestige from the czar. Um, you have a, a market function there with the rondelle that you can see. Um, get to use dice, um, which has a minor luck element, but really everybody's using the same results from the dice, so it mitigates that luck part of it. Um, there's a ton of re replayability because the sections of the cathedral are going to come out at random. The tiles that you place on top of the sections are coming out at random. The guilds are coming out at random. Um, and uh, really makes for lots of interesting things to be done and lots of interesting decisions as, as you play it multiple times. Yeah, so um, I, I've played this game a few times, so I, I kind of know the, the gist of what's going on here. But let's let's give a brief uh, overview of the different options you're going to be doing in the game, and we can like jump in there a little bit. Okay, sure. Um, actually, before we go into the, uh, the the options for actions, I would like to mention the scoring tract because that'll it'll help oh, some yes. of the options that's later. Okay. So if you see on the scoring track there, um, there, are back, there are two types of points you can score. There are recognition points, and then there are prestige points. The recognition points are kind of what you're going to get most of the time when you're playing, but the prestige points are, are what really count when you're scoring. And so once you've crossed certain thresholds of recognition points, then you get then it's converted into prestige points. Okay, so just keep that in mind as we're explaining the rest of the rules. Now, when we go into our actions, you do have three basic actions that you can take, but uh, there are also a couple, couple of optional actions uh, that you can take that you always want to keep in mind. And basically, you can sacrifice a prestige point in order to get two rubles, because, hey, everybody needs money. Uh, or you can sacrifice a prestige point in order to re-roll re -roll the dice in any given segment of the market. So keep those options in mind because uh, they definitely do come in handy at times you know, if you're willing to risk um, you know, sacrificing some of your prestige. 
But as but far it's as prestige the basic points. Action, yes, prestige, it's prestige. Points. You don't want to just give them up willy it. nilly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Means uh, means you're getting the favor of the czar, and he might not take your eyes out or something. Um. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we uh, with the the main actions. So the first thing you can do is you can uh, claim a section of the cathedral. So what, what you would do in that instance is you would take one of your banners, so maybe Lincoln could grab one of the green banners there, and move it to the bottom section of the cathedral, of, of one of the towers. So just do uh, the one with the red die, let's say. Uh, the the cards uh, at the top. Yeah, yeah. The card. Yeah, yep, yeah, perfect. Okay. All right, and then that means you've claimed to that section of the cathedral and the, of the tower. And there are three different types of, uh, of sections for the, for the towers. There are doors, there are windows, and then there are domes. And you're trying to kind of build your way up uh, as the game progresses. And then when you do that, you get to take that tile, that red tile with the die there, and place it into your workshop. Um, now, if you see on your workshop, you've got a bunch of different dice, um, different colors, and so forth. And you can choose whichever one you want to put that on. Um, yeah, so you can go, uh, because that means later that whenever you, you use that die, uh, you get to, to add, that activates the ability, it gives you an additional resource. So since we're green, uh, why don't we put it on the green die? That means every time we use a green die, we're gonna get to invoke the ability of the red die as well, so it starts to build upon itself. Um, but you'll see that there's a cost there under that, um, under that, under that die. And in this case, it's going to be three rubles. So what, we definitely want to pay it. You can put it face down, but it's not much to your, to your, to your benefit at all. So let's pay the three rubles, place it face up. And that means later when we use the green die, we're going to get to uh, get some extra stuff, basically. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the long and short of claiming the, the spaces on the cathedral. Um, did you have anything you wanted to add, Steph, or, or questions about that? Uh, no, it just, uh, you want to look at those tokens and pick wisely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do, you do. And, and, um, and, and the nice thing about when, you, when you're placing those tokens in your workshop, you know, eventually as the game progresses, you're going to be able to get stuff for basically any die that you use. And so like you, you always have stuff that you can pick and, and actions. It's not like you're really, really stuck. Uh, in the game, especially if you remember to sacrifice prestige to get money and so forth. Um, okay, so then the second basic action you can do is you can transfer inventory. And uh, let's imagine, so Lincoln, if you could put like a wood, a gold, a stone, and a brick, I don't know. I can't really see the cards all that well from, from my screen here, but um, put yeah, those Yeah, it looks like he inventory. claimed. What's that? It's where the flag, yeah, it's where the flags are, Lincoln. So next to the green flags on that line, like a ruler type line right there, you could just drop them in yeah. those little sections. Each yeah, inch is go. a section that you hook. So you, yeah, you have a you have a holding tank. You can only hold so much. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you, you you'll see that. Um, so you kind of want to put them in a in a line, Lincoln, so just like the uh, the banners are. Are, um, oh yeah, perfect. So each yeah, each inch has a has a has a section on there. Yeah, like there that. That's great. Okay. And so this is this is your inventory, and you are limited um, with the number of things you can put in your inventory. So it's also to your advantage to use those banners quickly so that you can free up space in your inventory. But uh, okay, so hypothetically we have stuff in our inventory, and as another action, what we can do is move up to three. Uh, items from our workshop, uh, from our inventory, onto a section of the cathedral that we've claimed. So Lincoln, could you hold I up that uh, card where the card. green flag, the green banner has been placed so we can take a closer look at that? Yeah. Perfect. All right, awesome. Okay, so this is, this is what one of the cathedral, the tower sections is going to look like. Um, basically, those are the resources you need in order to build it out and to complete it. And then uh, you'll see the, the four there. That's the amount of rubles you get once you've uh, completed that goal. And that cross with the eight, that's uh, how many recognition points you're going to get once you've completed it as well. And then you would flip, flip it over. So 
So you'd put it back into the tower and then, um, yep. And then what we would do if we're gonna transfer inventory is we would take goods from our inventory section and move them onto that, uh, onto that section. So I think in this one, we, we needed wood, stone, and gold. So maybe take one wood, one stone, and one gold and put them there. Okay. I think it's so important now, to note that you can, you can only move three. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And so like, this is all we can do with this one for now, but later, maybe if we get that second wood, um, we, can, we can move it there. And uh, then we'll be able to, and then the, the section will be completed automatically. By the way, when you're moving it, uh, resources from your inventory, you don't have to put them all onto the same section. So if you have multiple sections that are in play, you can divide how you split them up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so let's see. Oh, the, and, and then, uh, like I showed you, you can complete it. Uh, let, let's imagine that we, we placed that that last wood there on, yep, and it's been completed. So now uh, it gets flipped over and your banner goes there, right? You get some money, Ooh. you would get some recognition points. I think it was eight. Yeah, you get some bonuses yeah. for that. And then um, now I think it was four rubles and eight recognition points. Okay, and so yeah, that would yep. go onto your tablet or whatever. Yeah, oh, um, and then. There's another thing that you can do. Uh, if you can hold up the tableau. The tableau? Can, yeah. Oh, the, there you go. Yeah, I got The you. workshop, sorry. Okay, you see how there are, um, up at the top there, you've got a door and there should be a, a window and there should be, and there, yep, uh, and then a cross, right? So you notice, yeah. there you go. You notice the wood uh, next to the door. That means this is a this is a decoration or an ornament. And what you could do also, if you're wanting to transfer inventory, is you could pay that cost to to um, that wood and put a door on top of the section that you've completed on top of the bottom section that you've completed. And later that gets you um, more more potential to control that tower because there's an area control element to it. And it also gives you, uh, it makes the tower more valuable. The other thing about, about the, <clears throat> pardon me, about the decorations is that you can uh, choose to decorate with gems as well. And so you see right below that door there, you can use either a green gem or a purple gem, and that automatically gets you one prestige point. Or you could do, or you could decorate it with both, and that would give you three prestige points. And especially at the beginning, there's, there's a bit of a gulf between the prestige points and the recognition points, um, especially at the beginning. So like jumping three prestige points uh, early on in the game is a really big deal. So you might want to consider that as one of your actions. And so the doors are always going to go on the, on the door, on the bottom section of the towers, windows in the middle, and then the cross is going to go on top of the computer. So it looks really cool once you get the whole yeah the earlier you can get out your decorations definitely is a, a big benefit because you are jumping very far along that score track uh, versus just That's getting right. little recognition points here and there but yeah it's, yeah, it's really it's a cool mechanic yep um, okay so, um and there, there's another little thing just to mention that if you if you if multiple players have claimed sections of the tower and you manage to complete a section above one of the sections of your opponents um, and they haven't completed it yet, you actually, the, the czar doesn't like that. He shames them and they lose <laughs> recognition points. So, <laughs> so there's, so there's a little bit of like, <laughs> what's that? Unless it's yourself. If you build above yourself, right. it's fine. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um, then I guess we can move on to the market action. So this is the, the last of the three action, three basic actions that you can take. And this is really the meat of the game. Um, so what you can do when you, when you take a market action is you can take one of those, uh, one of the dice and you get to move it along the rondelle, uh, the number of sections that corresponds to the value of the die. So let's say because we're green, and we have um, a, a tile in our green dye section on our work in our workshop, uh, right? 
we can let's move yep. that green die of five and see what happens. So it's not spaces, it's segments. So you're gonna go, segments, yeah. yeah. There you go. Four, yep, five. perfect. Perfect. And we landed on what is that? Is that a, a two brick? Two, uh, two bricks. Sweet. Okay, so when we land there, we would get to there are three things that happen when we land. So the first is uh, we can we can get the resources there. So we take our two bricks and put them in the inventory. Now this is not mandatory because maybe your inventory is getting full and you don't want to take those bricks because you don't think you need them, but you can. Then the second thing that you can do, and and by the way, you can do the, and these three things in any order. The second thing that you can do is use the influence of the guild that's in that quadrant there. So you see the guild card. Maybe you can hold that up, Lincoln, please. There you go. Cool. All right. And so these guilds are going to give you different uh, the ability to do lots of cool stuff as well. So you can see in this instance here, the craftsman. Uh, this is it has an infinity symbol, so it means you can do it uh, as many times as you like. You can trade in a resource for one ruble, or you could opt to spend two rubles and buy any one resource that you want. And again, on this one, you can do it multiple times. Some of the guild cards have a lightning bolt, means, which means you can only do it once per turn. But that's really cool if you're needing to, you know, obviously finish a section of the cathedral or whatnot, or maybe you need more money so that you can uh, have enough, so that when you place another banner, you can pay to put the tile into the correct section of the, of the workshop and so forth. Um, and then, so you can use the guild card as well. Then uh, the third thing you can do is activate the section of your workshop where that, where that dial was, where that, where that uh, tile is. So we have a red die uh, in, our, in our workshop section there. So that means that we get to use the ability of what's, where, where the red die is. So it looks like the red die there is in front of a green gem. So we get a green gem, which is awesome because green gems are awesome. Yeah. Uh, when you're decorating your, uh, when you're putting the decorations onto the cathedral, right? And so, and then that would be the end of your turn. The last thing you would well, always you would roll, do you would, is the die. Yeah, roll the die. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say. Yeah. Please. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the last, the last thing that you would do is you would you would roll the die, and it changes in theory the result of what's there. So go ahead and roll. Cool. Nice. Um, now let's back up a little bit. So Lincoln, if you could put the, the white die in that same quad, uh, section where the green die is, I want to explain what happens. All right, so if, if you land in a section where there's already uh, another die or already two other dice, you can, uh, it, it's the number of dice in the section multiplied times the resource. So in this instance, you would get four bricks, uh, up to four bricks, you can take as many as you want instead of just two. And if there were three dice in there, you could get up to six bricks. Um, and then, uh, and then you would, you would re-roll all three dice or all, however many dice are in that segment. Um, one other thing about the green die and the white die, because we're green and the, and the, the, the green die is, the green die is green, it's obviously, uh, the green, you can uh, pay one ruble to move it an additional space if you like, uh, as many times as you want. And same with the white die because the white die is neutral. So um, that's pretty much the market. What am I missing, Steph? Oh no, I think that I think that's good. Um, if the game ends once six flags, somebody places all six flags. At, well, I mean, uh, cl builds all six parts of their sections of the cathedral. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And um, the way that the scoring works is so, Lincoln. If you could take that first tower there, where the green banner is. Anna, please, yeah, and then put put a door on that on that uh, on that bottom section there. Yeah, you can leave the banner there, please, and then flip over um, the middle section and put a yellow banner on there, and then flip over the top section and put a green banner on there. Awesome. Okay. And then maybe put a yellow cross on top of the dome. Because when you're when you're doing the decorations, you, you can decorate other people's spaces. So even though they built it out, you can you can put your decorations on there. Um, now, in this instance, that tower 
is going to be worth two prestige points for every completed section of the cathedral. So we have uh, three completed sections, so that's six points, plus one point for every adornment uh, or decoration that's on there. So that's we've got two two decorations, so that's another two points. So this tower is worth eight points, and whoever has the most pieces of their color on the tower is going to be the person who gets the eight points. So in this case, green's got two banners and one door. Yellow only has one banner and one cross. So it's three to two. Green gets the eight points. But yellow is not completely at a loss there because uh, the second place uh, for control of the tower gets half of those points. And then if there were three players, it would be half again. So in this case, yellow is going to get four and green is going to get eight. So that's how it works. You score all the towers. Oh, and you do get points if you have excess materials, like you see green has all that stuff. Um, and money, you get yeah. It at a one yeah. So one point for every five surplus material. And if there's a tie, it's um, whoever has the most uh, uh, built out sections in a, in a tower. And if that's still tied, uh, or built out sections in the cathedral, rather, and if that there's still a tie after that, it's whoever has the most decorations. And then um, beyond that, the czar looks upon both of you favorably and you go home happy. <laughs> so <laughs> you play again. You play again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. We have a rematch. So, so Matt, tell so, us how you acquire uh, the Red Cathedral and is it available yet? Uh, okay, so. Logistics these days are complicated. We were supposed to have some available in time for Essen, but our boat got delayed by about a week. Um, the, the, it just, I know, it just hit the port. We hope to have product in stock next week to be able to start uh, shipping to stores. We have a program called the DeVere Store Program. And uh, so they get, they'll get the stuff a little bit earlier, but we should be in pretty widely, wide distribution in, in North America anyway. Uh, the week of November 2nd. That also is true with Europe and most of Latin America, where we have several offices. So. Okay, I know we're just about out of time, but I know you had another game called Polis. I so I just don't want to, do you just want to mention something real quick? Because we're. Yeah, let me grab right. a copy of that. So, really quickly, this is Polis. Um, it is a very weighty two-player uh, kind of, I've seen it described as a war game that's a Euro and a Euro game that's a war game. Um, but uh, there's there's really a lot to it. It's the, uh, themed around the Peloponnesian Wars. Uh, it's based on a game that was originally designed in 2012 by a guy named Fran Diaz, who um, he, he was called Polis Fight for the Hegemony. And uh, we we got an opportunity to take it, kind of change change some of the graphics, clean up the rule book, um, and make these really cool inserts into the board. You can't quite see it that well, but the, all the cubes fit very nicely into the inserts now, so they don't kind of slide around the table anymore. It's a really beautiful game. Um, oh, look at that. And really yeah, so we, we don't have like, we have just a couple minutes. So do you want to just give us okay. the real fast? <laughs> the real fast. So it's a two player game, Athens versus Sparta. And basically you're trying to um, <clears throat> get resources so you can feed your people. Sometimes if you put your soldiers into the same space, it can trigger battles. Uh, it's a, but it's a two player game uh, and it only lasts about two hours. Very, I re highly recommend checking it out. The original game got a 7.7, .7, or it still has a 7.7 .7 on BGG, and it's ranked number 60 nice. in terms of war games. So um, this is really So nice when update. is this available? Same time as uh, as Red Cathedral, so November 2nd. <clears throat> if I can put awesome. in just a couple of quick plugs. Uh, yeah. We're doing interviews with the designers for both Polis and uh, Red Cathedral. If you go to our our stand in Essen, you can you can see the schedules for all that stuff. And so I would highly encourage you to take a look. Um, and I think definitely. I think we are 
We're out of time, but you have been a pleasure, Matt. Thank you so much for joining us and telling us all about Red Cathedral, one of the most anticipated games on the BGG Geek List. So uh, everybody's really excited to hear about that. So I'm glad you could talk in depth about that one. And we'll all look for Polis, which is also coming out from Devere. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's been uh, it's a great opportunity. I really appreciate it.